You see that tall building way out there? Looks like a castle. Yeah, if you don't know what's there, you think, oh wow, who lives there? This is such a castle. Well, it's actually a cement factory. I've been there, seen it. They produce a lot of cement. Sometimes our vision can deceive us and make us think something well the reality is something else <laughs> that reminds me of the life of this world we see something life of this world we see it as beautiful some of us see it as beautiful and we rush to it we try to achieve so many worldly stuff we achieve it then we find <laughs> at the other side is a cement factory <laughs> it was not the castle that we thought subhanallah Okay, back to the prophets. I can only see from, say, say from my experience of reading the Old Testament for the years that I was practicing Christianity. And I was so amazed at the stories in the Old Testament. How I got close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how I saw he sent prophets after prophets to guide people and he was so patient and how when uh, when people when people obeyed the prophets Allah blessed them the Bani Israel Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed them they conquered lands and lands and lands and people he he gave him so much victory they obeyed their prophets and subhanahu wa ta'ala when they start started looking at what other the idol worshippers had their life they started following them they started copying them they started marrying with their people which allah has prohibited then allah took away their power and he let their enemies overpower them for maybe centuries subhanallah this is a fun thing for people they come and do here have a good time everything is so clean so over and over I, I used to read and watch, actually hear the the time I had cassettes I had a cassette player and I would listen to the cassette of Old Testament again and again and again because I saw how Allah guided worked with people how what they did how they obeyed the prophets they prospered and how they didn't obey the prophets they were basically destroyed their enemies became their their enemies became their their conquerors they became slaves this happened again and again and they killed the prophets and then when i came to islam and read the quran i saw these stories not in chronological way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions some of the names of the prophets and mentions that what people did to them and with them subhanallah this happened all the way and allah had promised them that they would never they would never taste safety because of what they have done with the message of Allah and the message of prophets and how they behaved and now they think they own the world and Allah promised them the promised land Allah did promise them but they they did not keep their part of the covenant and Allah took it away from them Allah only knows when He's going to judge between them and take everything that they have away from them. Maybe this would be the end time. Then after all of this comes Jesus. Allah sent from among themselves, among the Jews. Jesus was born from a virgin mother and he created he did a lot of miracles he brought the death to life and 
blind he cured he did so many things but in the quran every time these are mentioned allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the permission of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is my cabin right at the bottom i will keep going until i can finish this so what did they do a handful of people believed in jesus at that time and the jews tried to crucify him because he did not fit the picture of the so-called messiah they had in mind they did not believe that he was a messiah as muslims we do believe that he was the messiah subhanallah to them they crucified him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said they did not crucify they did not kill him him neither did they crucify him but allah took him to himself of course every muslim believe in jesus as the messiah he was the messiah he is the messiah he will be the messiah he's the one that's the sign of the end time that he comes after mahdi if you believe mahdi is another savior the last of the descendants one of the descendants of prophet peace be upon him he will come to bring peace on earth and after that of course then we have the trial of dajjal this is something i ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take my life before this trial fitna begins because it would be so incredibly intolerable that even the believers would become too afraid to disobey this evil creatures that believes to be first messiah the false messiah and then he claimed to be god himself and many people believe in him will believe in him those who don't believe in him will be put to death according to biblical version the sign of the beast everybody has to have this mark in the back of their hands and forehead and it is not surprising that that is being happening now with this virus we walk into the store we have to put our forehead in front of a, a temperature machine and then now we have to have a vaccination that goes on our mobile we cannot do anything unless we cannot travel without it and in israel actually people cannot buy or sell without it and biblically it is said that people that do not have this mark they cannot buy or sell so a lot of christians for many years they try to live in the country away from population grow their own food so that they would not have to buy or sell but in islam we don't have this prophecy this version of the prophecy but we have a lot that is said about dajjal which i really recommend that you check into it i put it on my facebook raya for peace you know my facebook name raya for peace please check my post and i put about dajjal and other information i think i'm going to go back anyhow so i come to the end of the creation story there's a lot of detail but i just wanted to give you some background about it and why i'm doing this you're making me walk more than an hour see <laughs> i'm just kidding but i do this when i come here i do this anyhow by myself this is wonderful but i do want to go in the water i want to go in the water usually i go in the water and i exercise for another half an hour i'll take you in the water for a while before i finish so you can see it, get a little bit closer to the water i just want to make sure i would not get my mobile submerged so please my dear brothers and sisters please reflect on what i have said what i've said is from the book of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's the truth for whatever i've left out and made a mistake may allah forgive me 
and I did not mean to add anything that Allah did not say but my aim is one thing it's warning you to please take heed to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if you stick to the Quran and the Sunnah of Rasulullah you are sure to be saved in a way that you would not even know it please cling on cling on to the Quran to the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and leave off any doubtful actions lifestyle or anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and try to reach out to people now more than ever our ummah needs guidance our ummah needs guidance you can do anything you can do anything if it's online if it's any way do not just do it for yourself do not just learn for yourself reach out please do not post anything that displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if you think you're weak please do not be on Facebook in fact most scholars say that Facebook is prohibited for Muslims unless they're doing dawah guiding others to Islam if that means anything to you you can just cut it off from your life cut off social media get back to the old-fashioned dars with the ustad with the quran lessons you can have fun two different things you could do that is keeping you from getting misguided